So a while back, my friend Kraken Cartoons was telling me about this game called Pizza Tower, saying that it was a great game that I really had to try. I don't know why, I just kind of still doubted it. I mean, it's a platforming game about pizza. It can't be that good, right? It's that good. Yeah, this is one of the best games I've ever played, and that is for a lot of reasons. The art style is fluid, the gimmicks are amazing, and it's just real fun to play, but if there was one moment when I knew the game was something special, it would be at the first boss, because the bosses in this game are absolutely phenomenal. So I decided it would be a great idea to rank all the bosses in Pizza Tower from worst to best. A few disclaimers I want to get out of the way. First of all, this is just my opinion. It's not objective, it's not fact, and if you disagree, that's alright. And, I mean, if you want, you can even tell me in the comments about it. Second off, everything in this list was extremely close. I mean, maybe not last place, but all the rest. So if one of your favorites is down in the bottom, it's probably just because everything was so close. I could change it next week if I wanted to. Finally, major spoilers for all bosses in the game, obviously. Especially the last two are way more enjoyable when you get to see it for the first time yourself. I suggest not watching the video until you've played the entire game. With all that said, let's begin. I really like this boss, it's great. But if I'm gonna be honest, it never really stood a chance of getting higher than last place. For all these entries, other than one that I'll get to very far in the list, I'm gonna be starting with the bad stuff. And when it comes to this one, it's pretty simple. It's a very simple fight. I mean, the easiest way to see it is just look at all the attacks. They have a charge attack. How do you counter it? You jump. They charge twice. How do you counter it? You jump twice. They will slam on you. How do you dodge it? You move a little bit. They have this slam and then jump, which is honestly probably the most complex. But all you do have to do is just move and uppercut in the right spot. Still very unique, but not enough compared to the others. And then of course there's charge twice and statue, which is, you know, jump twice and statue. It's very simple, and honestly, that's not even taking into consideration parrying. And while that is generally the biggest problem, the thing is, everything else this boss does, like being great visually, having astounding music, and whatnot, is, this is Pizza Tower, which means that every single boss is like that. And that basically means if you put this in any other game, this would still be one of the best. Especially if it was still the first boss. But, nonetheless, as it is now, and one of the best games I've ever played, it's not quite that level. I will say, probably the biggest thing that I can praise it for is all the obstacles that enter the arena. It does make the fight a lot more interesting. Nonetheless, it's still the worst boss in the game. Man, this one hurt a lot to put in second last, because I love this fight, but nonetheless, it, it just saw too much competition. This one basically has the same problem as Pepperman, in that it doesn't really have a special gimmick that makes it unique from the rest. Alongside that, the lack of a final phase does hurt it a little bit, though what we do get in exchange is pretty funny. And despite those two being my only real flaws, it's just that everything else is basically essentially flawless other than small and little nitpicks, which made me decide to put the noise at number four. But that's a bit too down, let's go and bring it up with all the ways that this boss is just amazing. First off, music, great. I love the, I think they're called orchest orchestral hits in the first half. And the second half, with the little vocals, especially those, just make the song pop. I love how the noise just uses basically the same few attacks, 
but then varies them up every so often and makes the fight feel a lot more unique. And honestly, probably the number one thing that I love about the fight is just how it feels like such a good grudge match. Like, you're up against this guy, and they're flipping you off, and when you hit them, instead of, you know, just knocking them back, you, like, tussle around, and there's just a ton of rage in the air. It makes the battle so much more enjoyable to do, especially, I personally enjoy taunting all throughout the battle, it just makes it so much better. So, don't be fooled by it being in second last, this is an absolutely phenomenal boss. Who Vigilante? Where to begin with this guy? I mean, I, I'm serious, they have like no flaws and I start with the flaws that I don't know where to go from here. Honestly, the only reason it's this low is because, you know, the others that are ahead just had certain features that are way cooler, yada yada yada, I've already said this a million times, I'm sure it's getting old. I was gonna say a flaw is that because of the Vigilante's small size, the fight doesn't have quite as much stakes. But honestly, all that does is make it more amazing when they can hold his own, because this is by far the hardest boss fight in the game. The amount of attacks that just take up half the screen, the gun making it so that the attacks aren't like insta-hits and you have to hit him a lot, and it just being very dynamic with all the things that come your way, make the fight very difficult. There's one point in the first half where he shoots a bazooka and a ghost comes down, that's the phase that kills me half the time, like, kills my P-Ranks. All in all, the hardest boss to learn, p rank. And as somebody that really enjoys hard battles, especially battles that really feel like a duel of wits and skill, I really enjoy this battle, needless to say. I'm also gonna bring up something I usually haven't brought up yet, and that's speeding. Which is, you know, just speedrun strats. Specifically here, if you hold your charge shot before they switch sides after damage, then you can basically skip a ton of shots that you would have to take otherwise. The speed running is one of the most enjoyable things you can do in this game, and this is one of the fights that does it extremely well, along with our next one was. Honestly, I think the thing that tops it all off is just the gun mechanic being really, really fun to control. Like, there's a shotgun in later portions of the game, and that's very special, but this one's completely different, and is also just really, really enjoyable, and makes the fight harder, and way more unique. Visually, I love the atmosphere, art style's great, and the music is really good, especially at the beginning. After that, it dies down a little. It's not as good as some others, but it's really good, which kind of speaks for the whole fight. Final phase is the same as well. It's extremely good, just not quite the level of the next two on the list. Pizza Face was actually originally going to be number one, but our number one spot just barely snuck ahead while I was recording footage. We'll get more into that later, but just know that as good as this fight is, it's not perfect. However, I'm not actually going to start with the flaws of this boss, what makes it not quite number one. Instead, I'm going to talk about something else, which is how this boss takes stuff from all the others. It's like Pepperman that in, despite being a very easy boss, mainly because of the health regeneration between phases, didn't really need that. I see it for Phase 3, but not Phase 2 at all, because Phase 3 is supposed to be cool. But despite that, it has a lot of unique obstacles, especially throughout Phase 1. It's like the Vigilante and Noise because of the gun and charm in Phase 2, respectively. And the scattered nature and speed strats of Phase 1 relate to, well, you know. And also, then there's the boss rush which is just phenomenal. There is no going against the fact that that is one of the coolest parts of the entire game. You cannot fight me on that. But as I was playing this fight, I realized I didn't really have as much fun on replaying it. And I realized that that was because that within the phases, there's not as much progression. 
I mean, phase one is the same attack, just getting a bit bigger each time. And then, of course, phase two, while having more attacks, still doesn't seem to get stronger and stronger like the noise would. And while that may seem small, because it kind of is, after replaying what is now number one, it was so good that I ended up bumping it up all the way to the top. So that one little thing was enough to bring it to the bottom. Sorry. Now, Fake Pepino is by no means a perfect boss. There are a lot of aspects in which they're lacking. For example, I'd say that their music is probably the worst of the boss themes. It's not bad, just, you know, worst. And at first, I was actually going to put this in third place. I ended up seeing quite a few things, though, that made me decide that this is, without a doubt, number one. First is just how well the build-up is done in this fight. Throughout the intro, it's kept a silhouette, and it's the only boss that you just have no idea that you're going to fight, which just makes it so much more dramatic. As for the boss itself, everything about it, from the design, to the background, to the music, to just the attacks, do a great job of feeling really fun whilst being really unsettling. The way Fake Pepino just keeps building off your own attacks and twisting them is so very, you know, it's a little unsettling, but also really fun. Especially, if I'm being honest, one of the best phases in the entire game is the phase where there is about a billion fake Pepinos just running up the walls and slamming down on the ceiling to try and kill you. It is so visually, like, really distracting. It's fun to dodge. It's just amazing, man. And in phase two, all the Pepinos that are just everywhere make the scattered nature of the fight is just so good. The scattered nature makes it so enjoyable to replay all the time, which is probably what bumped it from number three to number two in the end. But there's one big thing that I say put it in first, and that is the speedrun strat. You know how at the beginning of the noise fight, if you attack at the very start, you deal extra damage, prompting you to, you know, go for the throat? Big Pepino's got that, but a million times better, because almost every single of every phase can do that. Every single attack. If you attack at the start, then you get extra damage in, and it makes you want to go for the throat. There's even more than that, like with the running phases and the super jump phases. It's just so amazing. And that's not even bringing up the final chase scene, which is just the best phase in the game. No contest. Like, sure, it's a little slow now compared to how it used to be faster. Apparently, I haven't played it. But nonetheless, it is just so enjoyable to go through. Very terrifying, but very fun. And all of this made me decide to put it in number one. I really enjoyed making this video. Pizza Tower is now one of my favorite games, like, ever. And it's so fun to talk about even, you know? Again, I highly recommend anyone who has not yet done so, play the game, buy it, play it. It is so amazing. You will not regret it. And that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you really did, then make sure to like and subscribe. Helps a ton, and it also will let me know you like the content and you want to see more of it. I'll probably end up making more Pizza Tower content anyways, just because, again, love the game so much, but still, please, I would love that. I hope to see you soon, and goodbye. Also, last video I kinda did something where, as you guys leave the video, I just bring some random thing into the closing section. So let's do it here, um, all boss themes ranked. As just brought up in number one, probably fifth place would be Fake Pepino. Just a little simple, you know? Um, fourth place would actually be Vigilante, because as amazing as the beginning is really good, the rest of it just kinda slows down after. Number three is probably the noise. As good as it is, um, it's not quite that level as the other two. N number two is Pepperman. It is 
so, so fun to listen to. And number one is Pizza Face slash head, I don't know. And that's mostly just because it has three of them, and honestly, both Phase 1 phase, and Phase 3 are some of the best, along with Phase 2 probably being, would just be below Pepperman. 